Okay, so um, I will reuse the one I already generated in the last class, but if you generate kind of completely fresh one, you should have... We don't need the delay, we don't have text view yet. I will do it again from scratch, right? But I'm not generating it, but... Uh, yeah, you will have the snack bar. Um, so that is impl implemented. You will not have this one. And uh, of course I converted it to 1.8, right? So if you generate the, um, the new um, Yes, sure. Code a little bit bigger and this a little bit bigger. Uh, how we were doing it? Preferences, appearance, this one. How big was it? 20? Yeah, probably. Okay, let me make myself a bit more space. Okay, um, so we have the snack bar, we have the code which is generated automatically. So yeah, so up after I clean the imports, you sh we should have the same code uh, if you generate it from scratch, right? So I have a single activity, which I called main activity, and it basically shows the hello world uh, text view in the middle. And it has kind of an empty taskbar with uh, settings at the top and the fab in the right lower corner. Um, so what we want is uh, we want to generate a single second activity. Um, so I will do both. I will do both at the same time, okay? Um, so I have main activity, which is this. And now I click on this package and I say, I want new activity. And I will again pick basic activity. Um, so I will again have a text view with the uh, text view in the middle with the fab button at the at the bottom. Okay, um, so if I pick basic activity, I will call it activity two. So instead of calling it main two activity, I will call it activity two, and then I will don't tick anything. So I will not say it is a launcher activity because we only want one, the the main one, to be the launcher, and I generate it right. So what it will do, it will generate for me the layout same as it did for the first one, and it will generate the kind of skeleton code for activity two. So I will do that. And it says, oh, do we want all this new code to go into the Git? And I will say no. So now in my Java code, I have two, um, oops. <coughs> I have two activities. I have main activity and activity two. Um, and in my layouts, I have four files. Um, why we do that this way? Um, if you if you pick basic activity, you will only have one. Uh, stop clicking. Um, but if you do this way, what happens is you have um, so the the main activity. If you if you check it, um, the main activity looks like this. It has the coordinator layout, so the whole layout is the coordinator layout. Then I have the app bar, so application bar at the at the like, so that that's the layout which allows me to have the toolbar at the top. Then I have the content, and then I have the floating action button in here, right? So I have um, I have this part which is kind of reusable, right? What, what it means is I can have some UI and I can retain the whole view the same way I can just swap the middle part to be something else, right? 
So it is kind of like a single page application which allows you to manipulate what you really want to be in the in the middle part, in this part here you see with the which is highlighted, right? Uh, so if I have a button here which changes that part, the action button and the toolbar will be the same. They will not be kind of re-rendered again. It's kind of all the same, right? So, and this part is reusable and this part is separate, separated from the rest, right? It, it, it is kept in the separate XML file. And for this purpose, it, it is a very uh, simple constraint layout which has one text view, right? Uh, and this text view is kind of in the middle and it, it says that it should be in the middle of the screen, right? So with the constraint layout, you can kind of uh, set up where you want the element to be rendered. Um, if I took this constraint layout, if I copy that bit into and pasted it instead this file, instead this line, it would work exactly the same. I would just have one XML file per my view, right? Uh, it's just a way of modularizing it, right? So with the second one, we have the same modular uh, thing happening. So if I want to add a new button, I have to add it. Um, yeah, I mean, button we can reuse from here. So I, I can, we can reuse this button to do something to launch the second activity for us. So let's do that first. So how will I launch the second activity? So from my main activity, instead of showing the snack bar, how can I launch a new activity? How do I do it? I need an intent, right? So I need an intent uh, called uh, action second or maybe action activity two, right? And new intent. And I import the intent. Uh, what parameters the constructor will take? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so I will say main activity dot this, which means I need a context. I need to, to specify from which context I'm running the, the second activity. And then I need to provide a type of what the second activity type is, right? Um, so I will call it activity two dot class. And that is the type um, that specifies the type of the um, the class type of this second activity. If I don't put dot class, it will mean a type, but in a way which is like, it's not a variable representing the type. It's actually the type itself, right? So I can, uh, I can have a, a variable. I can call activity to variable V. So V is of this type, but activity two is not, kind of a instance of the type, it's just the, the name of the type. So to have an instance, you know, Java has this uh, syntax convention, which you say class, and this is, yeah, so if I go, yes, let me change to here. If I go um, Java object. No, no, no. Copy. So Yeah, it's not it's not explicitly here. 
um, but what what it basically is it's you can kind of think of it as it is as a static instance variable of that class representing that type right um, so now once I have the once I have the uh, activity tool what can I do so because I'm doing both at the same time normally I would just start uh, start activity so let's do that first uh, start activity and pass the action activity to right so now if we run it uh, so I will run the emulator So it's building, running the tasks, which is it needs to um, compile the code, package it into the APK, sign it with the developer's keys, transmit into the emulator, and then launch it. So we have it. So now if I press the, the button, I have activity two with the tab button as well so as I told you the a basic activity is basically the same thing we missing the text view and it has the the button which has the snack bar the second one right so if I press back button I'm back in my original um, activity one main activity so that looks good so in the second activity we need a text view and the uh, text field and in the first one, we also want to have some text. So, um, so let's go first to this one. Um, so we have a text view, and then we need to put, um, you know, put a new text element. You can use the designer, so you can drag and drop, um, you know, some of the um, elements. So I have a number of. Um, Elements which I can drag and drop um, into the the designer. So let's do that, and then you can also look at the uh, XML file, right? Uh, whether you prefer working with the XML or whether you prefer working with the designer is up entirely up to you. Uh, in old days, when you were working with the designer, the text was a little bit untidy and it was actually difficult to switch to using text. The, the modern Android Studio is good enough that it, you, you see it generates kind of a text that it's still human readable and it's still kind of laid out nicely and so on. So you can mix, right? If you want to control some details, sometimes it's easier to do that in text. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to do it in the designer, right? Um, so we have um, uh, we have now two fields. One is called um, uh, one is of type text view. So I will make it a little bit bigger. Uh, and the ID is a TV message, which is this hello world message, uh, because it has the default text called hello world. Um, and then the second one ID is called edit text, right? Um, it is kind of a good practice if you consistently use a particular prefix for your things because then when you say r.id. you will kind of see the completion and then if you use some logical naming conventions it will be easy to find which ID you want to refer, right? Uh, so I tend to, um, you know, the default name edit text is fine, it, we just have one, uh, but if you um, if you want to be more pedantic, we can call it uh, edit and then what this field is for, right? Uh, so for example, we may ask a user for a name and then in the second activity and we want to display it, um, no, 
we, we asking user for a name here and we want to display then that one so I will call it name right so then I, I know that this is an editable uh, field that it's called name and for this one I will just say text right uh, so again you can you can do whatever conventions you want I tend to to delete the um, the e so it's txt and then for the editing uh, fields um, I yeah you can use edit or whatever um, yep so we have the uh, those two sorted and then for activity 2 we currently have um, activity to content and you see that the content doesn't have anything right it doesn't have neither the label nor the uh, text field uh, so make it a bit bigger again so it's a little bit easier if we do the text with the designer so we say put it here and put this one here um, so now um, I will change the IDs so now I will have um, in the activity 2 I will have uh, text um, so what we will show here we will show the name and then for this edit thing we will rename it to say this is a surname surname okay so I have the first called uh, text name and then the surname um, and that's pretty much all we need for for this one so if I relaunch it it will rebuild it and I have my name uh, so if I say Marius so I have my text field uh, which is hello world and if I press this button I go to the second one and the second one has this name at the top and this one here right it's a little bit untidy it's kind of a little bit crap uh, crappy layout right so how about we change um, so we see that uh, the text view for the second one uses the absolute X and the absolute Y uh, and it's the same for the um, for this one so if we if we look at the at the main one um, so this one says So it has a number of instructions of how to lay out the, this component, right? So what this component says, it says um, the layout should be uh, relatively attached to the bottom of the parent and to the left of the parent, to the right of the parent and to the top of the parent. So it's like right in the middle between the top and bottom and right and left, right? Um, so what we can do is we can do similar whoops we can copy that so I copy that I paste it into my um, activity to content so I will paste it here which means now our text view is the same kind of in the middle and then for the bottom one um, what we want is we want it to be at the bottom of the first one, right? So we want the text view to be a label on top of our text field, right? So what we need is we need to say um, this one. So we'll say 
we are to the bottom, but not of the parent, but to the bottom of the uh, text name, right? Um, constraint top. I don't know whether you see how it looks like, but what I did, I now constrained that the top of this element has to be at the bottom of the text field, right? Um, so for the activity one, we can do the same thing. So if I copy that bit, it looks a little bit odd. Let's just run it and test it. Um, and this one was called text message. All right, so we save everything. And then we relaunch it. And let's see how it looks like. We have some typos. Constraint. Oh, Jesus, what we got wrong. So here, why the creator came here? Layout, um, That's correct, right? So I pasted something with the keyboard probably. Okay, let's rebuild. So now I have the label and the text view is under it. It looks okay, right? So if I type Marius here, and I will have it like this, and I press this. Yeah, and I'm in activity two now, so let's go back to activity one. Yeah, so now the activity two looks kind of the same. So what we want, we want Marius to show up here. Uh, so we want to pass data first from activity one to activity two and display it here. Um, so let's go back to the code. And uh, in the main activity, now I have uh, in my button, I need to get content of my edit text field, right? Uh, so I need to have a handle which I can get what the user typed. So normally what you do is you have a private field, um, edit text, and you probably for consistency would call it the same as you called the the names of the variables so i had uh, I, I had it called edit underscore name so in xml i tend not to use camel case i tend to use underscores up to you you can use uh, the the uh, conventions are a little bit more flexible for xml in java you should use camel case um, and then uh, here, what would you do is you would say this edit name equals find uh, view by ID, and then we are using this utility class called R, and we're finding our uh, edit. So if I, you see, if I start typing E edit, I have all the things kind of uh, helping me to find where, you know, what I mean. So I have it, and then in here, uh, we need this string. So we say we have a final string uh, name, which is our edit name dot get text to string, right? So now I have inside name variable, what I want to pass to the second activity. And 
as you know, I have the intent and then I can, um, um, you can put extra, which will basically put an extra parameter into the bundle of that intent, right? So what I can do is I can put, um, I can put this, so I can put extra, which I will call name, and then the actual value which I want to put is name, right? I can do that. What's wrong with this code? Magic string, right? I have now a magic string, magic string that I have to use here and when I want to get it back in two places. If I do a typo in one of those places, my code will be broken and the compiler will not complain. So we don't want to use magic strings. So maybe we say param, param name and we say we have a public static final string param name, which is name, right? I have a constant, which now I can reuse everywhere and I am not running a risk of having typos, right? And also I don't have a magic string in here. Um, and then I call the activity with this uh, extra parameter, right? So inside my activity tool, now in the, um, in the code, when I get the intent calling me, uh, all I need to do is I need to update the, uh, the text view that I have. So again, I need to have an instance for keeping track of what I am referencing. So I will say private um, text view And we called it text uh, name. So I will call it text name. And then in here I would say um, this text name equals find view by id r dot id dot text name. Great. And now I need to say this text name equals name and my variable string final name I have to get it right equals so how am I gonna get it from the intent well there is a function called get intent and that returns you the intent you were called with and once I have the intent I can say get extra and I can get extra by type so because I know it was a string then I have this function called get string extra, which I'm gonna use. And now I have to put this key. And the key was inside main activity dot param name, right? So now I have extracted this extra parameter which I passed through the intent, and now I can do it. Of course you can, oh, oops, that's, you cannot do that in Java, you can do that in Kotlin, because it will, you know, automatically convert into the uh, set text. Uh, method, but for Java you have to be explicit of what you're doing, so you can do the, you have to do this. And then I could basically do this in a single line of code, right? Um, so let's give it a try. If it builds, then chances are it's gonna work. Um, so now I have my app. I can type something here. So let's type Joe. And then if I press this button, I should have uh, Joe showing up here, right? Um, but nothing shows up here. Um, so why nothing shows up here? Well, I suspect, uh, and we don't have any, let's see, uh, we don't have kind of, um, for our app, we don't have any errors. 
or do we? No, we don't. So it's kind of silently fails. Um, and let's do a little trick. So when we say um, in our main activity, when we putting this extra into the intent, right? Um, let's not use this API. Let's create a bundle. Um, so let's have final bundle bundle equals new bundle and then bundle uh, put uh, put string and we basically do that the thing that we've been doing here um, Oops. Yeah, let me just let it. And then in the extras, we will use, we will put that um, Yeah, so let me just browse the API first. So if I go to the... Um, Android... Intent bundle. No, I want the API. Intent. So we will check how we can pass, how we can uh, create a new bundle for that intent. Um, so what might have happened is by default the activity intent doesn't actually have a bundle associated with it and if you uh, kind of setting, put, putting things into it, uh, you first have to initialize it, like what is the actual bundle associated with the uh, with the parcel that you're gonna do. Uh, so let me quickly check this. Yeah. So extra. So so you have the getters and then you will have puts and you will have Setters. Yeah, so we have to use the put. So with the put, yeah, so we can call replace extras. So what we can do is we can say replace extras. Oops, no. What is? Yeah, it has. Yeah, and then put bundle into it, right? So let's try with this one. So what I did, I have my own bundle instance, which I initialized the same way as before, and I'm passing that one uh, instead of reusing whatever the intent has by default and. As I said, I suspect by default you don't have 
kind of a bundle instance, so you have to initiate initiate it. So let's do Joe again and call it. Nope, doesn't work. Okay, let's debug it. So I'm getting um uh, I'm getting the intent. Yeah. Uh, this is my main activity. Yes, of course. Um, I am doing this one wrong because here I should say action activity two intent. Of course, thanks. That's good spotting. Uh, we're getting the intent in the second activity, but in this one we have the instance of the activity. So, yeah. Okay, let's see. So Joe again, and works. Uh, well, had I this mistake before as well? I was saying get intent before I did that change. Yeah, so probably it worked fine with the default bundle as well. Uh, but so um, you know, you, you, if the other one works as well, it's the simpler way than reusing the bundle which is already with the intent. This one you basically have, if you have some outside bundle, that you want to pu push back, which, for example, you want if you called something with a bundle already, and you want to give it back to the re to the return, so it gets all the fields again. You you could reuse this way. Um, so we pass data from this one to the from main activity to the second one. Uh, how can we get the results back? So to get the results back, we this way we're doing things exactly the same way. But instead of start activity, we, we call activity um, for result, right? Uh, and as you see, it has an extra parameter. It has an extra constant, which I have to dispatch for, right? Because I may have different activities that I'm starting for some result, and then I want to know from which one I got the, uh, the results back. So I may have another constant, which would be an integer, um, Public static final int. Um, yeah, what was it called? Um, yeah, the result code. Code and yeah, because I I only have one. It doesn't matter. If you had more than one, you would want to distinguish them like the activity two, for example, right? Um, and then if you have some other call with whatever you would call it, one, two, and so on. So I will do it uh, result. So now I'm calling this uh, activity and I have kind of like a, a code which I will get back to dispatch which activities I'm kind of uh, handling. And we have to look up. Um, so if I go... Android activity for result. Um, there is a callback which will happen when the other activity uh, finishes, right? Uh, and this callback is called on activity result. Um, so on activity result is a function which is called uh, when the other activity finished and passed the data back. Um, so it is available for all the API levels, it's protected, and all I need to do is I need to copy that, and in my code I need a method which I overwrite, which is um, basically this, and I protect. Um, so now the request code is the one which I passed here, right? So if I did that multiple for multiple things, then I can check for which one uh, I'm, I'm getting the results back. So in here, just for the sanity check, I will say if request code is not a result code from activity two, I return, 
I'm doing nothing because something went wrong and you know I'm not supposed to handle that the, the, the data. The result is the uh, resu result code which the activity came back with, right? So if I say uh, if result code um, is different than um, and now we have to check uh, so I can have result OK or result cancel, right? And result canceled is inside I have all those constants inside my where we have them in inside activity, right? So I will say activity activity result activity result okay. So if it is not okay, I'm also doing nothing, right? So if the result from for me is not from what I expect it to be, or if the result is not okay, I'm not doing anything. And then if everything is as expected, then what I will do is I have this text field called, um, we called it edit name. Yeah, we don't have the message. So I need my text view. Um, message which is hello world by default and here I will say this text message equals find view by ID r ID text message then I will extract um, so I will say I will have final string name equals data get string extra um, param name and say text message set text name right so this will work uh, to set the message back to what the other activity passed uh, to make it a little bit more interesting I will say hi um, and then I will say plus and I will say edit name get text plus space plus name and to be really tidy what I should do is I should rename the other text field to be surname right so here we're typing name then we're typing surname and coming back and it says hi name surname right uh, so this will work the only missing bit is what returning the bundle right so let's have a look um, um, yeah so we see here um, we have um, for result um, so we have a we have to set the activity result um, to be you know cancelled or okay um, and we can put intent back in here with the bundle which has some data right so what we will do in the um, in the activity to snack button uh, um, the not snack snack bar the fab button. Uh, we will not show the snack bar. Uh, what we will do instead, we will say set result, and then we can do. Um, so we have to say activity result OK, and we have to pass the data back, and the data will be an intent. 
uh, which we have to create. So we can say intent uh, data equals new intent. And then, you know, context is our activity two. Activity two, this. Um, and then the actual intent is kind of arbitrary. We're not gonna launch anything or use anything, so we can pass any class here. But for the sake that this activity is actually coming back to, act to main activity, we can use main activity class, right? Um, and then we have to set uh, data, put extra param, no, main activity, main activity param name is now, yeah, we need the second private edit text, edit surname, and then we get a reference to it. This edit surname equals find find view by ID, R ID, um, edit surname. We called it surname already, which is good. And we would say edit surname get text to string. Let's test it. Did I forget about anything? Should work, right? Let's see. So what should happen is I should be able to say Joe and click to pass the data to the next activity. The next activity says Joe and ask me for the surname. I will say Doe. And then if I press this, I should go back. Um, yeah, I should go back to the original activity and show hi Joe Doe. Why it doesn't happen? Well, it doesn't happen because we kind of don't uh, finish the activity. We, we kind of haven't closed it, right? So how do we close an activity? We call finish. Exactly. So now if we, oops, if we go back here, it says, hi, Joe Doe, right? So again, if, if I say uh, Marius, and I go here and I say Novostavsky, uh, it's stupid thing. Then if I press this, it says, hi, my name. All right, so passing simple data back and forth is fine. You have a template. Passing more complex data, you just use more complex types, right? Uh, if you have objects, then you have to decompose them into properties of that object and pass them through the bundle, right? So you can have a bundle which also has a bundle inside. So you can have a one property like key value pair, which is another bundle, right? So you can pass complex data structures this way uh, between the activities. All right, um, questions? So that's all for today. And please watch the videos for the lecture for next Tuesday.